As most of you know, we lost Meatloaf. He was 74 years old. And just about a month ago, we interviewed the bass player from Bat Out of Hell, Kasim Sultan. Here's some more memories of recording Bat Out of Hell. I don't know where I put it. Oh, oh, geez. I don't usually pull out album covers, but uh, like, yeah. holy snapping turtles. They uh -huh. misspelled your name on this, right? Yeah, T-A-N. Yeah, nice. my name is misspelled more. Uh, my name is, is on that record more than Meatloaf's. So uh, I, I uh, but it's responsible for any of this, this stuff going on I here. Am, I, what, I, listen, I what's going on here? The only thing I'm responsible for on that record is, 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 is helping with the arrangements and the bass playing on the entire record, which, you know, uh, in terms of what, you know, what are some of the highlights of your musical career? I think playing on one of the biggest selling records of all time um, is a feather in one's cap. Um, you know, I, I mean, I have tons of friends who have played on millions of records, but not too many people have played on Dark Side of the Moon, Thriller. Um, uh, uh, there's a, a, a Hotel California or Bad Out of Hell and then or Falling Into You. Um, so there were like five or six uh, records that uh, uh, in, in throughout the course of uh, the record recorded music that have sold that many records and Bad Out of Hell is one of them and I'm the bass player on that record. So there you go. To me, it's kind of like when I heard Carry On Wayward Son by Kansas or Bohemian Rhapsody by, by Queen. And I was a Queen album, you know, a Queen fan. I had the first the debut album, Sheer Heart Attack. But by the time, and then I hear that and I'm like turning around uh, and saying, well, what the heck? Um, but to me, Bad Out of Hell was not, I wouldn't have picked, I would have been wrong, but I wouldn't have picked that album as being a hit album. And But it, to me, that was a good example of people at least widening the horizons a little bit and saying there's more to radio than this you know i, I mean they got kicked out jim and meatloaf got kicked out of clive davis's office that uh, clive said you, you guys you you should go find something else to do in life because you are never going to be successful um and that's you know clive davis who uh you know has a, has a a really good ear um uh, you know, to his credit, Todd heard something in that music that no one else or very few people did um, and took it and created something or helped create something. It was really Jim and Todd uh, that, uh, that 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 really envisioned that record the way it was, the way it is. Um, and, uh, you know. And now there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, everybody's uh, uh, is responsible for the success of Bad Out of Hell. You know, it's like I there was a when Jim Steinman passed away, there was a Facebook post by someone who I, I know, um, and he was lamenting the fact that Jim had passed and remembered his work on Bad Out of Hell. One, the guy was never anywhere near the freaking record. Um, so there, what what is the what's the what's the phrase? Um, uh, 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 success has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, everybody's the first one to say, yeah, I did this on that. Right. I did that on that record. I was in the studio when they did this. I was at, no, sorry. Um, there was four of us that recorded the basic tracks for that record from top to bottom. It was myself, Todd, Max Weinberg and Roy Bitten. And uh, and then a lot of people came in and did overdubs and background vocals. Rory Dodd and Ellen Foley on background vocals. Myself, I, I did some background vocals. Todd sang some backgrounds. Meat was uh, was delegated to the corner until it was time for him to sing. And then we said, OK, you can sing now. Um, and uh, and but it was really Jim and uh, and Todd that that put that whole concept, that whole record together and. Um, and it just resonated with with uh, with millions and millions of uh, of disenfranchised people who did not want to uh, or didn't fall into the category of um, well at that time there was no John Bon Jovi but um, you know the 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 idea of what uh, uh, the music industry was selling as uh, as a beautiful rock star or a successful rock star it was completely the antithesis of that.